Unless you have access to a private driveway to allow you to charge an EV off the street, your alternatives are pretty limited. You can either take your chances with public charging stations, which are generally slow and frequently either full or out of order, or you can try one of the on-street solutions, essentially running a cable from your house out to the car on the street. Despite the fact that this is a Heath Robinson solution to a problem that shouldn't even exist, the UK government is offering grants of £350 to install such a cross-pavement charging point outside your house, which is essentially a cable from your house which runs in a trench across the pavement to your car. Sounds great, but the only problem with this is that it breaches a whole bunch of electrical wiring installation regulations and might even result in electrocution. Great. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter X. The Institution of Engineering and Technology, the IET, of which I happen to be a member from my earlier life as an engineer, has recently issued the fifth edition of its Code of Practice for Electric Vehicle Charging Equipment Installation and the requirements for earthing of on-street charging points conflicts directly with the government's plans for simple over-pavement cable runs. Without getting into the details, if two on-street charging systems next to each other do not share the same earthing system, it's possible that a fault in one of them may cause an electric shock risk between one car and the next, or between one car and another piece of metal street furniture, such as an electrical cabinet or lamppost. I cannot explain it better than this extract from the channel eFix, so here it is. Last month, the government unveiled a £350 incentive for electricians to install EV chargers which cross the pavement. The plan is designed to dramatically drive up the number of electric vehicles that are charged on our streets. But this week, leading electrical experts and local authorities have revealed to us their fears about the increased risk of electrocution for pedestrians. The alarm stems from the risk of simultaneous contact between the body of electric vehicles and another vehicle or a piece of street furniture such as a metal lamppost or telecoms cabinet. Unless the two items are connected to the same distribution systems, there is a risk in a fault of a high potential difference between them. Consultant engineer and chairman of the IET Wiring Regulations Policy Committee, Graham Kenyon, points out that under the IET's Code of Practice for Electric Vehicle Charging Equipment Installation, electricians should carry out a simultaneous contact assessment before starting an install. Guidance on EV charging from the Electrical Contractors Association also emphasises the need for such an appraisal. If you can touch any other electrical equipment at the same time as the electric vehicle, you need to ensure that it is connected to the same earthing system. But the problem is, it's often impossible to tell. Additionally, with on-street parking, it's difficult to guarantee that another vehicle connected to a different electrical system won't be parked next to the first one. And under the guidance, if you don't know, in theory, you can't proceed with the installation. That's the reason that many Many local authorities are saying no to cross-pavement charging systems. The apparent contradiction between the IET guidance and the government's cash incentive for on-street charging has yet to be resolved. The IET code is a printed book which is expensive and which I'd never use again, so I haven't bought a copy. But the ECA guidance note covers similar ground, if you'll excuse the pun. 6.3 Earthing and Bonding as electric vehicles may be expected to be charged often outside or away from existing buildings and hence be outside the normal equipotential zone required and created by normal earthing and bonding practice, as might be expected, BS 7671-2018 sets stringent additional requirements. Key regulations to consider in this respect regardless of earthing systems adopted include 411.3.1.1 requires simultaneously accessible exposed conductive parts to be connected to the same earthing system. 542.1.3.3 requires consideration of protective conductive paths between installations fed by separate earthing arrangements and suitable protective steps taken to avoid problems. I think there's a typo there and it says chapter 54 which covers earthing and bonding generally. I'll leave links to these technical guidance notes uh, in the description. There's this one that I've just quoted which deals with EV charging specifically, but there's also one that deals more generally with earthing if you're uh, really interested in that kind of stuff. But EV charging is actually very dangerous because of the high power and voltages required. And so it's not just a question of stringing an extension cable over the path to your car. 
If a fault develops in your system and a passerby happens to contact your car and, say, a nearby metallic pole, there is a genuine risk of electrocution because of the different earthing systems. As the guy in the video said, it's often difficult to actually determine the earthing status of the different circuits and, as the saying goes, when in doubt, do nout. But the fact that the government is providing grants for these cross-pavement charging solutions at exactly the same time as the regulatory authorities are saying it's unsafe just goes to show how chaotic the EV zealotry has become. And it's also now becoming a serious danger to the public.